FIVB World League is in Poland for the climax to this year's event as the planet's best teams battle it out for glory. All the action to come right here in Krakow. <laughs> for both teams. And now the national anthem of France.
Witamy serdecznie. And so with the anthems over, the players make their way to the sidelines. We'll have the introduction of today's officials. And then after that, we'll have the introduction of the two teams. In charge today, one of the most likable referees you could ever wish to meet, Andrei Zenovich from Russia. And so too, his colleague today, the second referee from Mexico, Luis Macias. Wish those two the best of luck. We'll know if they've had a good game, as always, because we won't notice them. Our attention will just be on the volleyball, won't it? So it's Brazil who come out onto court first and uh, Bernardinho picking his strongest team. So Bruno number one setting, it's Wallace number four in the opposite slot. Maurizio and Souza. Maurizio going through the middle. Lucas also through the middle, 16. And it's Lucarelli, 18 through the outside with Maurizio number 19. This is how they line up. Rotation one is how they line up. Bruno is at position one. Bernardino did lose his rag yesterday, briefly. Other than that, he's been pretty cool, calm and collected. France make their way out onto court. And it's uh, Benton Uti, number six, who is setting Anton Rousier, number four, the opposite player. Through the outside, it's Engerpeth, number nine, and Marichal, number 16. And in the middle, it's number 10, LaRue, and number 14, Legoff. Two teams have already played once before in this year's World League, and that was a win for Brazil by three sets to one. Drapenikov has been one of the star liberos of this tournament. He has made some sensational digs, and if you haven't seen them, then you can get them online. This is how France line up. Also, rotation one, they are matching up with Brazil. And so much as having three front court attackers against three front court attackers for most of the match, and then equally having only two against two. Laurent Tilly has guided his team this far in this year's tour and can he guide them to the final can they keep hold of the title they won last year against serbia that remains to be seen doesn't it the veteran sergio who'd retired from international volleyball but was called back because of their libero crisis is starting in this game Still have such strength in depth that actually Murillo is here with the squad, he's here with the with the team, is not on the score sheet, hasn't played any part in this tournament. It's Brazil in yellow serving, the defending champions, France in blue receiving this, the second semi-final from the FIVB Volleyball World League here in Poland. France have their side out. It'll be that magical maestro, the maverick that is Engerpeth to serve. Lucarelli tonks that one down the line onto Grabenikov. Not sure Grabenikov knew a great deal about it. You can see the way that Grabenikov though holds his ground. He knows what he's got covered and he knows what he needs to cover. And that's why he held his arms inside. Good read by Maurizio. Wallace, he doesn't need an approach, Wallace. I'm pretty sure his standing jumps as high as his uh, 
spike approach. He only has two steps for his spike approach, and it's a bruising ball through the middle by Souza. Look at that, brilliant. Overloading on the French block at four. Lucarelli. He's had a couple of days rest to play in the match against the USA. Covering by Marichal, no one at four, so Engerpen has to go on a 50. And he's put down, isn't he, big time. Don't very often see a 50 run, certainly not in open, in uh, part of any kind of side out offense. That one was an out of system play. Would like to see though, a nice B in 50. And that's the uh, middle blocker going on a two meter shoot. The outside hitter coming inside on the second tempo and then the ball going out to where Engerbeth just hit that last one from. Trying to get a free swing through four from the 50. And that's been brought back by Grabenik comedy having a little cuddle with Lucas. But it had gone inside the antenna, I think, as it uh, came back. And therefore, as a result of that, you're not allowed to go and play it back again. You had to go back outside anyway. It all gets a little bit complicated. 4-1, France call timeout. Réception au loin, il essaie de le ramener plus près du filet, quitte à pousser avec la main, etc. Parce que les roulettes, ça ne sert à rien avec eux. Les roulettes, ils vont le, les amener. Ils vont vraiment essayer de mettre près du filet. Si on est loin, on tape tout droit, tout droit, et on va soutenir. D'accord get some great shots don't you from the super slow-mo Lucarelli oh, you've seen some audacious side acts during the course of this tournament but look at that that's extreme side act a flipper a dig and then a block out. It wasn't even a textbook dig from Engerpet. He just stood there and flicked his wrists at it, didn't he? Never ceases to amaze watching Wallace hit through two. The Santa Cruzero player from Superliga in Brazil. Look at that. I mean, there's no room. Just incredible. Us mere mortals would have been snapping the antenna trying to get that down that line. It's Sousa with the serve. High and wide for Marichal. He hasn't caught the hands. It's going to be a challenge though. I'm not sure Marichal even knows if he caught any fingers. So we're going to go for challenge. Two challenges per set, per coach. If you get them right, carry them on. But not into the next set. Challenges are block touch, ball in, ball out. Ball into the antenna, foot fault. Net touch. But you do have to press the right button. We have had a couple of instances where for example, it's been called challenge for block touch, but they press the wrong button. And you can't change that. And that didn't touch anyone or anything, did it? So no net fault. Oh, fault given. Well, it must have been right at the very end when the ball was still traveling, because, wow. Well, I've only got a little monitor to look at things. Uh, hopefully those of you watching at home, and perhaps on the big telly, could have seen that better than me. And if you're watching on a laptop, probably had as good a view as I did. Which 
Which then begs the question, if you are watching at home on the laptop, have you got headphones plugged in because the missus is not wanting to be disturbed by watching something else? Or perhaps uh, you're watching and it's your husband or boyfriend who wants to watch something else. Hopefully you're all watching because there's nothing else that needs to be watched right now other than this epic encounter between two greats of the game. There's that one smashed off the block. It sends Marichal back to serve. France just two behind now. All of you aspiring middle blockers. Just watch this, focus in on the ball, up, open up, and then bang, arm straight through the ball. Shoulder turn, hip firing the shoulders, firing the arm. Nice up from Wallace. But then everyone stood watching Lucarelli, expecting him to put the ball away. Nobody covering, well at least not in any kind of meaningful context. Just watch, they're all stood there. Maurizio is expecting perhaps to go and have a hit, but once he didn't, he needs to cover. Well, Bernardino is really unhappy about that. There's been, and you have to have player safety has to be forefront and of your mind here. You can see that player's gone up. Oh, it's ankle. So Lucarelli's come through the net, and the ankle's gone. And you have to stop play. You just have to, because you have to be conscious. And, and Lucarelli's straight over there. He knows that his foot was under and he's landed. And in that instance, you stop. That's it. Make sure he's okay, and we can play on. And that was why LaRue stood there, because he fully expected Tony Uti to come around and set the ball. That's a, the right call, it's a good call. And even if uh, Bernardino is unhappy, he would expect the same if it was one of his players. I just don't think he saw quite what happened. Look off with the serve again. And Wallace with a great swing. And the ball's been given us in. And we hit the technical timeout with Brazil in charge in this first set. Look at that. Like me, you're wondering what all the noise was for. There's actually a, a, a little uh, soundometer going on, I think, between girls and boys. Guess who's making the noise now? There's a big net touch, I think they'll challenge net touch, but then they have to challenge net touch and ball down, because uh, Souza was in the net. Can it be picked up? Will we see? Will we see? We'll see Souza in the net, we just need to see whether the ball's on the floor or not. Oh, I don't think it was. So we're going to have a net fault challenge. 
the uh, this is what Bruno's going to say. Yeah, but the ball was down. Well, we'll find out. If the ball had been grounded before the net fault, then it is no fault. If we only see a net fault, that will prompt an outcry from Brazil, won't it? About, well, the ball was down. I don't think there's any question there was a net fault. Souza was in it, but where was the ball? Yeah, yeah that's fine. There's, a, there's the net fault. We know that. But was the ball down? Don't think it was, was it? We can't tell because we can't see it. Although no question, there's no complaints from Brazil. So they were happy that what we saw or what we didn't see out of screen was that it hit somebody else. So the ball hadn't actually gone to ground before the net fault was made. Sousa makes up for it instantly by putting that ball on the floor. And Gapeth with nowhere to go. Lucarelli shutting him out. Nice dig by Sergio. And a clever play from Lucarelli. Well, LaRue's going to get into trouble here. First referee not happy. Might well have been something he said. Oh, he's still unhappy, LaRue. Better from France. No one able to stop Rousier. Well, up by Grabenikov. That's more like it from France. Not overall by this occasion, are they? Not worried. They know that they're in this one for the long haul. Rabenikov keeps it off the floor. And then Rousier gets a really good block out off Souza. Brilliant from Bruno. And Brazil take the point. But the question is whether that ball was in or out of the antenna. Marichal now is having a go. You can't talk to the lines, judges, gentlemen. Only the captain can talk, and that's to the referee only. Any other shenanigans, we'll see cards being issued. And it's nobody's birthday, at least not here in Poland, in this game. Well watched by Marichal and he gets into a good position and a very clever tip over the block. Laroon now goes back to serve. Good lead by Sergio. 40 years of age Sergio is. He'll be 41 in October and he's going to be going to the Olympic Games at the age of 40. What a quite incredible story for him. Yes. 
D'Souza. Oh, great reactions. Uh, Wallace goes up. Well, what a way to win a point. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. Lucas from the floor. Gets it off his hands. <laughs> oh, it's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. He, he didn't get it, but he just kept his hands up. Made a block, as you do, from the floor. And then... Brazil take the point. Souza once again. That was nice. That was Bieniek like. Ah, oh, just gives you goosebumps. Watch this again and enjoy it. Bruno and Lucas play together for Modena in Italy. And they've been doing that all season together. DHL Modena, the uh, Superliga champions in Italy in cup and league. Engapeth plays for them. Oh, lost. Lucas and Bruno are his club mates. Oh dear. They are by no means teammates here. And an error from Engapeth takes us into the technical timeout. Brazil have a commanding lead. Well, those of you who are watching online right now, those of you who perhaps sat at home watching on the television, wherever you're watching from, hopefully you're enjoying this one. I know perhaps not quite so much if you're supporting France and wanting them to get back into the final. It's not quite been the first set they would have liked. A few changes for them. Cleveland has come in now. And those of you supporting Brazil will just be delighting at the way that they're playing. But it really is a top-notch game of volleyball, is it? I'm not sure that should have been played by Ligoff because Edgar Beth just turned away in disgust in the middle of that. He was coming right over the top to hit it. And it was the long arm of Ligoff that got it. And then he gets it at the second time and puts it away. Oh, would you believe it? Engapeth's going to the bench. Liniel's coming in. Just love the way Wallace comes in and attacks the ball. It's a step, and then he jumps in from that step to a two-foot plant, and up he goes, and then over the top he goes.
It's the serving pressure from Brazil that's causing France problems. 18-12 up in this first set. And Brazil are cruising. But France call another timeout. There was nowhere to go, was there? Only a cross-court angle and Lucas took it away. Another point for Brazil. Oh, it's just getting better and better, isn't it? There's not much they can do about it at the moment. France, despite their best efforts. It's one-way traffic at the moment. So now, off comes Tony Uti, Pierre Pujol coming in, Pujol. And apologies to those of you, I said that uh, Lucas and Bruno and Enkepeth play uh, in Italy, they do for Modena. Well, my pronunciation may not be perfect, but hopefully we all got the gist of the fact they play for the best team in Italy, in one of the best leagues in the world. And it takes a lot to prize Brazilian players away from the Superliga. Wallace is just picking corners and he's hitting for fun, isn't he? Now, if you believe stats, it says that Wallace only touches 3 metres and 44 when he hits and 3 metres 18 when he blocks. I reckon that's more like 364, 3, even 74. A serve for Maurizio. Brazil now just two away from this opening set. France have no answers at all. In fact, they're three away. I got a slightly ahead of myself. Maurizio once again. There was a gap big enough to get the ball through. And that's all that mattered. That's all Ruzier needed. Brazil only required two more points. Quite get the body angle right, Mauricio. So France have the side out. And 
Maurizio's still moving, still, no, well, he's got himself set, but it was just a fact. If he'd stayed where he was in his base, he would have made that dig. Good leave. Set point now for Brazil. And with the ease at which they've taken this first set, it makes you wonder whether or not Bernardinho may well bring a few of the bench personnel on. Perhaps already thinking about the final. Oh dear. Well, Bruno might go off for that kind of error, but doubt it. Just apologises to Dad. Dad ignores it. Uh, Bruno has to get on with organising the offence. He's got Wallace, Souza, and Lucarelli to choose from, plus Maurizio on the backcourt pipe if he needs him. Wallace is dug by Grabenikov. Free ball. Sergio pops it in. Bruno this time goes behind, but Souza is denied. And there's a net touch by Clevno, and that wraps up the set. Brazil take it 25-16. They lead by one set to nothing. If you'd like to get involved. weekend having gone to a tournament I know there's plenty of volleyball tournaments going on all over the world in the UK particularly one of the biggest ones that's happening at the moment is at Whitfield in Bristol and good luck to all of the competitors there and to the organizers who normally put on a fantastic show a well-earned drink sit down and watch the volleyball watch your heroes some of the best players in the world two of the best teams in the world duking it out Brazil having taken the first set not great for France when you look across their rotations no positive numbers at all only uh, zeros in rotation one and two then it's minus one in rotation three minus two in four three and five and two in six all pluses for Brazil as you might expect Benikov 33% in reception Cleve no 40% but he only took a few passes Sergio 67% success rate from passing at the moment and Lucarelli with 75 tougher server needing by tougher serving needed by France in this set they need to put some pressure on Brazil don't they Pepe gets us underway in this second set and Lucarelli oh he's not quite got that one but it's off the block doesn't matter where it went Well, that 
seemed to stay in the hand for a long time from Clevno. However, he has the point. France have the side out. off the block as well Rousier getting the touch not that he wanted it because that ball did go quite a long way out <laughs> nice play from Engapet That's still on Wallace's side, his hand was anyway. The ball can still be on your side of the net, so long as when you make contact with it, your hand is either directly above the net and not going into the opponent's side. So some of the ball will be on your side still. That was really well watched by uh, Wallace, not breaking the plane of the net. He's done very well as Rousier to find the gaps in the block. They just haven't been able to give him the ball enough, have they, at the moment, France? Good serve. Well, Cleveland's introduction wasn't just because the other players in particular uh, Marichal was having a bit of a funny five minutes. He can come on and he can do a job, can't he? And he's doing it right now for his team. France have the lead. Taking his opportunity at the moment is Trevor Cleveno. Oh, another belting serve. Grusier gets it off of Lucas and out of play. 5-3 France. This is more like it from the defending champions. Yep, smack on the bonds, wasn't it? A serve from Cleveno. Let's have a look at this again. Oh, it's brilliant. Right across one player into the other, across Maurizio into Lucarelli. Classic timeout called by Brazil. A mesma mobilização que a gente vai para o cara que saca, tem um novo para o rodador lá, tá? E botar para cima a bola. Foi uma chance anterior. A intenção de rodar em dois contra-ataques. Bola rápida para trás, você passou lá. Deixa lá na paralela. Tá passou então, Maurício. Tá? Tá bom? Vamos agora. Atenção, variante depois do tempo. Tá? Liga no passe agora. Ok? Sure, he's not wearing that shirt in the hope that they might get on to play. He's wearing it because he supports his team. But right now, his team are in trouble. Just see Wallace come up out of nowhere to hit this ball. What a set from Bruno. It's just Wallace just caught Engapet's foot. Having a little chat through. Oh, there's a challenge for the footfall. There isn't a footfall because Wallace stepped on to Engapet's foot. And Engapet's foot was over the line or on the line. 
Engapet, Engapeth, my apologies if I've spelt it, pronounced his name incorrectly. Hashtag drinking game. Now, which way is this going to go? There you go. There's no foot fault because Engapeth stopped Wallace from coming under the net. went for the line there's a challenge coming did he find the line and he did just about catch it well this new total tracking technology that's been implemented for this is getting the ball from impact point to impact point, but it also works out how much of the ball is flattened out on the court as a result of how hard or the speed it's travelling. There's been lots of calculations done, lots of real-time tracking and work done, which gives us this uh, fantastic opportunity to see things that perhaps wouldn't have otherwise seen. And that's a monster block from Engapeth. Look at this scoreline now. 8-4 at the technical timeout. France are back in the match. They're back in this set. Oh, great work. Engapeth thought, no, I'll go and take this one. He made the right choice, didn't he? Because it was a one-on-one. -on -one. Look off with the serve for France. Bruno's setting is something quite exquisite, isn't it? And then with the movement he has of the players around him, the number of times that Brazil get one on one, I reckon it has to be more than any other team that they play against. Lucarelli gets it down in front of Tony Uti. Tony Uti just not quite strong enough, was he? And then LaRue doesn't know where it's gone. It's, it's in front of you. No, he couldn't get it. Both setters are able to put a quick ball out wide from off the net and that keeps the pressure on the opposition block. Oh, that might have been going wide. Lucarelli, though, wanted to have a swing, didn't he? But he's denied. Ruzier makes the block. Lucarelli has a long look at him and Ruzier is ignoring him. Tonyuchi again. He made sure of it that time with the swing hitter for Brazil.
Tonucci is a popular figure here in Poland, along with uh, Kevin Tilly, the libero. Both of them play for Zaksa Kajerezin. Probably pronounced that wrong. Brazil again, just falling asleep. You just wonder, don't you, the ease in which they won that first set, whether or not they kind of felt going into this one now, oh, this is going to be easy. But it's proving to be anything but, is it? Has that popped up very kindly for Rousier? Serve for Engerpeth. France have opened up the proverbial can of whoop ass here, haven't they? Well, left by Bruno. Brilliant work from the camera crew. Covered by Tony Uti. Rousier, three blockers against him. Lucarelli has, has to push that deep. Better chance now for Brazil. Bruno has a quick look, sees where everybody is, and gets that one out to Wallace. And Brazil are coming back, trying to put the lid on the can. That France had opened up. Well, that was almost the perfect block. Souza and Lucarelli were across. They hadn't finished their block. But they were not far off having done it, and it was certainly good enough to deny Rousier chest bump. OK, 
again, super blocking. Souza getting across to join up with Wallace to deny Cleveno. The commit block from Souza to deny Ligoff. That's two in a row now for the big middle blocker for Brazil. And just like that, Brazil are back level. 12 7 up, five points in front. You may well have been thinking that uh, France had this one in the bag. Don't think again. Lucarelli now with the serve for Brazil. Liniel couldn't stop it. Marshall sat on the bench at the moment, just putting his jacket on, was shaking his head as that one was shanked. Oh, very late movement, wasn't it, from Liniel? Didn't contain that ball, didn't take a step with his left leg. Completely off balance as a result. Lucarelli once again. That's a better ball in. Well, it was a good pass, but it wasn't a great outcome in the end. And a technical timeout, it's Brazil who are in front. Oh, hey! 16 14, on tourne, on revient, d'accord? Mais on n'a pas peur, il faut rentrer dedans, il faut bouger. Chacun son job, on y arrive, chacun son job, on y arrive. On est pas on est pas on est on est pas on va faire aussi. combien tout ça là Allez On là Pest trying to look round the three blockers in the front row to see where Lucarelli's coming from. Well, you're not allowed to screen in volleyball, but it's not quite so strictly enforced as it is on the beach. And you will see what effectively is a 3-2-1 at times. Three blockers, and then in the gaps between them, the two defenders, and then in the gap between the two defenders, the server, and you've got like this cone or triangle that the ball is coming from as we see that one is put away from Wallace and as a passer if you're in the wrong spot you can't see anything and then you get a jump serve coming over the top of that and at the speeds at which this ball's being hit almost impossible to deal with trying to take the game to Brazil. So the start of a double substitution for Brazil. Evandro has come in to the front row to blocks with Evandro, Maurizio and Lucas. No setter on court at the moment, but once Wallace's serving comes to an end, then William will probably come in 
That means if they make this ball into transition, it should get dug high to the middle. And maybe Sergio will pop it up for someone to have a swing. But that's not going to happen because Engerpeth just calmly rolls it off of Evandro's arms, which ends Brazil's serving run. And brings William now onto court for Wallace. That ball's been given us in. Mauricio goes back to serve. One of the advantages of having the double substitution is not just about putting the uh, setter into the back row and three front court attackers, it also reduces the use of rotation four, which can be. Uh, one of the worst rotations at times for teams when the setter's at four, having to get across to set the ball from two, and you have two front court attackers, then even rotation five can be a bit tricky. It just means you have more of rotation one, six, and five. You reduce four and three as a result. Good chase from Lucarelli. Sorry if I've lost any of you talking about rotations as uh, LaRue puts that down. But when you hear people talking about rotation one or two, three, four, five, six for that matter, it's where the setter is on court, what their starting position is. Well, it's all good work for Brazil, isn't it? Well, I've been spouting on about rotations. They've got themselves into rotation one and now they have the lead with it as well. That looks to have gone way out, although Brazil are going to challenge. Did it touch the block? We know it went way out, but did it touch the block on its way out? Interesting why France has stood there and not actually getting set up to serve. I have seen teams in the past, they know they haven't touched it, so the serve has just gone back and got ready. Who did it get? No one. Oh, did it? That looks like a finger's moved. It is a touch. Rousier off of his fingernail. Yeah, he'll be wishing he'd cut them now. Wow, a minuscule touch. But that's all it needs to be. A touch is a touch, isn't it? There's not degrees of touch. Not in volleyball. You either did or you didn't. Oh, that was very nice from Engerpeth. As cool and as calm as you could be. Oh, no more than you'd expect from the man that makes the game a joy to watch when he's playing. Now, can he back it up from the serving line? If Andro's put down. Really nice block from Liniel. He's up, he's watching, he presses, the ball hits the net. Neither of the blockers touch the net. Bernardino sticking with the uh, Rotation as it is, he's not tempted to bring Bruno back in and Wallace back in. He's leaving William and Evandro on. William's at five at the moment. But now the double substitution will happen as Engerpeth misses the serve and then that means that Bruno goes back and he'll go into rotation one. He'll go on and serve. Wallace comes on into the front row. Job done by William and Evandro. It's all square. It's nicely poised, isn't it? You get the feeling, though, that France really do need to take this set. If Brazil go 2 nothing up, that could be curtains for them. Lovely. See quick, short behind. Toniuti to LaRue. Serving over the screen. Engerpeth still gets it in, and that is a beauty. Yeah. 
Oh, it's been given us in. And a timeout's call because France are on the verge of taking the set. Oh, it's comfortably in, isn't it? <laughs> it's miles in, and Sergio's going, yeah, out. Nope. I believe he's missed it. Bernardinho is doing his best to hide his emotions. And it's set point now for France. <laughs> Rabenikov had moved, hadn't he? Base position, especially from the setter's touch to the A-quick on a quick ball. And then any adjustment for the ball on the wide sets. Now, Souza goes back to serve. Bernardinho giving him a serving instruction. And on to Liniel. Uh, Rousier puts it down. France take the second set, 25-23, and it's one all here at the Turon Arena. So confirmation of the scores, the teams are going to go off for an extended break, as has been the way for these finals in between sets two and three. One team already through to the World League final. As we look at the highlights, who will be joining them? Will it be France, the defending champions, or will it be Brazil? It was an interesting couple of sets, wasn't it? If you want to uh, get involved, hashtag FIVB World League. Let us know your thoughts on what you've just witnessed and where you think this one's going to go, where you think it could be won and lost by either team. I'd be interested to know. So would the rest of the world of Twitter. Come on board and sing like a lark.
So the best attackers, Maruzier, as expected. He's been the go-to man, hasn't he, for France? They needed someone to turn to, and he is the man who's been delivering. Engapet's been a little bit quiet, not had that much. And then Trevor Klivno, Klivno as it's pronounced, has, has come on and done a very good job. Wallace started brightly, faded away a little bit in that second set. And look at that, Cleveno has got himself a couple of aces. Blocks. Ooh, Souza. Four. These are blocks for points as well, not just touches. Widely held belief or philosophy, I guess, of blocking is you're there to take away an area of court behind you. You're there to slow the ball down. Making blocks for points are the bonuses. They, they shouldn't really be the be-all and end-all, especially if you're a, a blocker and you're going, oh, I never blocked him. But the ball went to where your defenders are, or you've got a touch, you slide it down and you've got the ball into transition, then you're doing your job. So best receivers, it's Engapeth for France. And Sergio and Lucarelli have been sharing the load between them in terms of uh, the quality of the receive. Uh, best scorers, that's a combination of attacks, blocks and aces. And it's Rousier for France, or Wallace for Brazil. No blocks yet for Wallace. I'm sure that will come.
teams are back out. They've had a, a mini warm up. In what is a, a very evenly poised and balanced match now, isn't it? A one set apiece. Like to have been a fly on the wall in the Brazil dressing room, that's for sure. Whether or not Bernardinho was really the right act or whether he was cool, calm, and collected. For sure, we are in for a roller coaster ride, aren't we? Over the remaining sets, whether it be two or three. Just wait for Engerpef to do his laces up. Pull his socks up and then we'll get going. Bruno then with the serve for Brazil. Set three's underway. Nice ball in by Grabenikov. And it's too easy for LaRue then, who goes on the B quick. So that going on that shoot ball, then right in between Wallace and Souza. So if you're going to commit, you have to still move laterally or move across. And really good play from France, opening up the gaps between Brazil's block. LaRue now goes back to serve. Oh, it's a great serve, isn't it? Maurizio just having a word with Sergio about who had responsibility for that, who should have passed it. Lou doesn't really care, he's got himself an ace. Well, it probably was Maurizio's, wasn't it? Well, that certainly was Maurizio's. But it's two aces in a row now for LaRue. Maurizio just giving far too much away inside. Now Bernardini, of course, time out. caught somebody on its way out. <laughs> Nicely done by Liniel is one of the shortest outside hitters that we've seen in this tournament. And he's a lefty as well. Not that that's anything against him, but that angle's quite tricky to hit from that side, opening your body up. Certainly if you want to then go to the line. That's why most lefties hit through the right side of court and are opposite players. Ah, it's just incredible! Like you say, that's a hashtag warm-up hit. Maybe even hashtag showing off. Banks inside the three metre line. Again, Daniel causing a few problems. One thing is, France would have done, uh, Brazil would have done their homework against France, against Marichal. 
they haven't seen Liniel play that much. How do you stop him? They're struggling at the moment. A rare foray into the middle for Lucas. Goff gets the better of Lucas in the middle with that play. Two mammoths going at each other. Le Goff winning that battle. Well, Tony Hutti takes a deep breath. He nearly got that back off of Maurizio. He'll go back to serve. Oh, it just missed his hair, wasn't it? Luckily, we weren't playing in the 70s. I reckon that might have caught Maurizio. Really good defence from France. Oh, who's going to play that? Someone other than Bruno needs to play that. Oh, would you believe it? 8 4 up, technical timeout, France in front. For me, and perhaps for other coaches that are watching that, the error is from Lucas. If he stays in there and blocks, he puts that ball straight down or he hammers it down and he lets and then if it comes over him he can turn and play it or the defenders behind him can play it because he's backed out it's dropped right into the position where he should have been well, I don't speak Portuguese but I kind of get the idea I think all of you do about what uh, Bernardino may well have been saying then Well left. <laughs> Bruno will get it. Good up from Maurizio. Free ball now, though, for France. They can get back into system here, and they do. As Leroux goes on the shoot quick. All options available. Generally, when teams get into transition and they're playing defence and turning that into offence, they both end up out of transition. You end up with a slugfest, really, of one player going against another, and only one or perhaps two options. But... On that occasion, the free ball allowed France to go right back at Brazil. Encapet now with the serve. High and wide for Lucarelli, who was hitting that one up around the height of the uh, first official. Andrei Marachev. Could have had a little chat to each other, couldn't they, as he went up to swing on that. Again, Leroux is being very effective through the middle for France, and Tony Uti's more than happy to go to him. And why not? If you're scoring, you're going to keep getting the ball. Bruno 
and off and running. Nice set behind. And it had enough pace on it as well for uh, Luca Relli to get block out. Wallace with a bit of work to do. But now Liniel with some work to do. Free ball here then for Brazil. Bruno comes in, Wallace pops it up to him just. Oh, that's amazing. Just brilliant. It wasn't the best of balls in from Wallace. He's now apologizing to Bruno. Bruno just ran in and went side on quick to the middle. It's a good play from Liniel. But look at that. Rousier didn't know what to do. Just keeps on going up and up, doesn't he? And as much as you like Engabeth, he is a little bit lazy when it comes to defence. He does like to just stand there. Almost to say, yeah, come on then. But then that, as a result of that, he does make an awful lot of digs with his feet. Nice up by Grabenikov. Chase is on. Oh, Souza's down and he's hurt. Now there might well be, I don't think the referee spotted it. Souza's in quite some pain and he couldn't play the ball because he'd hurt himself. How did he hurt himself? Well, he's already, he's been down the whole of the rally. And if he's down and injured, then the safety of the player is paramount. And quite rightly, the referee says, yeah, we'll play a let. It happened for Tony Uti, didn't it, in set number one. And the referee says, yeah, OK, well, let's play a let. And that's, a, a, well, that's why he's a quality referee, and that's why he's going to the Olympics. Trouble is, how did it happen? What's Sousa do? So he goes after it. Off he goes. Down he goes. And they don't get back up. Up again. He must have did a hamstring, is he? Yeah, he did. Must have done his hamstring. Might be as he was trying to get up. Well, that's not good news for Brazil. Still trying to work out quite what he's done. Holding his back. So there'll be a change that is going to bring in Big Red. Ed uh, Carbonera, who plays for uh, Voli Tubate, comes in now. His stats are, are just frightening. He's two metres and five, touches 360, blocks 330. In fact, it's, it's back. That's what Sousa's done. He's uh, jarred his back as he went down for that ball as Adair gets ready with a big serve. And Brazil come up with a big block. They're back to within a point. And that 8-4 lead that France had seems like a distant memory, doesn't it? If 
they're going to jump in the middle and you put your arms down. You're not really going to fool anyone to go after you. Bidet will serve again. He's been watching for all this game. He's come on to serve. Got the first one in. Not quite so hot with that one. He'll go back off again to be replaced by Sergio de Libero. Just checking. You all right, mate? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll be okay. Beth with three blockers to go after. Didn't touch Lucas, didn't touch Maurizio, and Wallace doesn't want to look at anybody because it touched him, did it? He's shaking his head. It looks like we're going to have a challenge. Wallace is saying, no, it didn't. So, in which case, that means if that is correct, until he's lost a challenge. Oh, they're saying touch on Wallace who was saying no I didn't touch it hasn't passed the lie detector test has he in the form of the challenge system so a good call from France Brazil have the ball back just two behind, which won't seem like much for them. They're all smiles still, pretty happy the way things are going. As they've got themselves back into this, they do have the opportunity to make a double substitution at some point if they want William and Evandro back on. Oh dear, Wallace with that pirouette pretty much in the air. And over, cutting the ball out wide. Into the block, into the antenna. Brazil have the point. Got to love the speed of Bruno's hands when he sets that ball. That's what happens when you're reaching upright. The ball isn't going to come straight down unless you can get your hands across the net into your opposition space. from Drabenikov. That's a wild one from Wallace. Tony Uti will serve. Tony Uti plays it. Oh, that is spectacular. In transition, combination play. Using Wallace on that 10 ball, but as a second tempo attack, just amazing. Lights out for Enger Peth. As that one goes down. Good lead from Wallace. Bruno wanted a dare to have a swing. A dare said, uh uh, I'll just let uh, Lucarelli have the hit. And then Wallace gets a decent call to leave that. 
and it was well out. So the technical timeout, France still lead, but it's only by one point. Just too hard. Very difficult to become as uh, relaxed as a sponge and let that ball hit you when it's coming at you at such pace. There's a natural instinct to tense up, but the art is to keep a solid base and then just relax from the from the hips up and try and take the energy out of the ball on those big hits. Although well, they're not always big hits as we just witnessed. Their touch against France. Rousier, who couldn't stay out of it. But Liniel just put up a block, said, go on then, I dare you. And then when he did go for the second time, he shuts him out. And Wallace having a long look through the net. Oh, block back into his head. I think he enjoyed that, don't you? expressionless the French team anything but though as this one comes off Lucarelli and goes out and Brazil call the timeout Nice dig by Ingepet. Oh, and then he takes it on himself on the backcourt pipe to put the ball down and give France a three-point lead now.
That was a huge block from Le Goff and uh, Liniel. Le Goff gets across, but it's over the top in the seam. Tony Uti finds Ligoff in the middle. And France find themselves closer to having the lead in this match by two sets to one. They have the lead in this set and they're four away from finishing it off. That's trademark Brazil through the middle. Lucas loves to hit down deep to one and deep to five. Base positions are never normally there. You can see how Grabenikov is having to adjust. He knows that they like to do that. And he still couldn't stop it. You have to rewrite the base position rule book when you play against Brazil and they can run the middle. from Wallace and whilst France are only four away from sealing the set Brazil are now only five away from doing it themselves right in between Engerpeth and Grabenikov Engerpeth is happy at a ball coming at him not so happy when it's to the side of him qui risque de prendre un, un, un gros risque encore là. donc on est prêt à la garder et sinon attention par les vous sur les, les, les balles qui peuvent filer parce que je pense qu'il va, il va lâcher ok on garde on garde allez patience on va chercher le bloc à haute surtout et surtout on va au soutien allez, 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 allez. Well watched by Lucas. Maurizio, bit of work to do. Oh, he's done it. He gets block out. Off Toniuti and Legoff, and it's all square. But it's still advantage France. If they side out, they have the lead. Brazil still need points from serve. He's thrown that quite away in front of him. Liniel pops it up. Engerpeth now against three blockers. Easy as you'd like. Just comes inside, continues on the way he's going, gets it off Maurizio. And France have the lead back. So the double sub being used. Williams coming in. If Andro into the front row. Maurizio, Lucas, Evandro available, plus Lucarelli in behind. It's a jump float serve to come, so Maurizio can push up a bit. William doesn't have so far to get into his setting position, which is in between two and three. And Maurizio says, thank you very much, cross court. Engerpeth gave him too much line, trying to take away too much. In fact, Engerpeth, not with the best of positions, was he? He was going out to come back in instead of staying square on going up, and then he could have reached inside earlier. All square again. Who's going to make the breakthrough? That is a quality set from Tony Uti as he puts that the other way to where Lucas thought it was going to go. He was having to play catch up. There was a gap between him and Lucarelli. And France sided out. Tony Uti got a cheeky little jump serve on him. And Lucarelli has a cannon on him. 
Full square once more. Stable ball out wide and then belted cross court. Evandro didn't get sold by the ball in the middle. Made an adjustment and he puts down Rousier. Watch Evandro, makes a little step, thinks about it, thinks no, wait, get up, get across, make the block. Deny France and bring up set point for Brazil. For the neutral, this is just a brilliant game to watch, isn't it? It may not be technically the most perfect, it might not be a flawless game, but that's what you love about volleyball. Every point is like a snowflake. Completely and utterly different every time it's played. And every time we watch the start of a rally, it's always something new. And this time, though, Evandro did get sold by the ball in the middle. And it's a free ball out wide to save set point. Oh dear, Evandro. Bernardino not happy with that. First to get two clear takes the set. Engerpeth. Evandro makes up for it. Gets block out. Set point again for Brazil. Double substitution to come. So Evandro leaves the court on a high. On a positive. And Brazil will just add more pressure here now because William goes off and Wallace comes in. He's the Brazilian version of Tigger, isn't he? Great touch. Oh, that's brilliant from Adair. He was off and running. France can come again, though. And now it does go off the block and out. That ball was hit so ferociously off of Wallace that the tape on his fingers disappeared into the crowd and was floating like a snowflake over the side of the court as it goes wide then to Rousier who gets it off of Adair and out of play. Well, this is what we want to see. Point for point for point. And look at that. Lafitte comes in. Daniel's gone off, height at the net for France as LaRue steps up now to try and deliver a bruising jump serve. Good leave by Sergio. 40, he moves around the court like he's 20, doesn't he? So until he says, tell you what, I'll challenge that. Will it be set point number three? Yes, it is. So Newt is back in. Linnell, sorry, Linnell. Linnell's back in, Lafitte's gone off. Lucarelli. Is it going to be third time lucky for Brazil? Not quite. However, Brazil are going to challenge. Oh, it's just epic volleyball, isn't it? It's just... This is why we enjoy the game. This is what we love about the game. This is why we watch it. This is why we play it, this is why we're involved in it. 
the roller coaster ride of who is going to win. Is it going to be your team if you're supporting France? Is it going to be your team if it's Brazil? Set point number four. Straight on to Liniel. And in fact, France got a better opportunity here now. Although it could be turned into transition, it will be. It is. It's hammered down. It's the cheeky C quick in transition that Bruno loves to do with Lucas. And Brazil take the set and lead by two sets to one. Well, there's another injury. Mauricio's been smacked in the head. But look at that, what a game! You get lost for words. 28-26. 35 minutes to get that one sorted. And it's Brazil who lead by two sets to one against the defending champions of this World League, France. Will that have taken the fight out of them? Will they come back? Or will Brazil go on and take the fourth set in the same manner that they took the first so many questions but we will have answers won't we soon enough see the highlights Some vital statistics. Top line's the important one. You've heard me say that often enough. 2-1 to, Br to Brazil. France were given more errors, actually, than Brazil gave them. Or rather, they gave Brazil, I should say, because they got six errors, six points from France. Incredible to see now just how the teams are going to react. Will that spur Brazil on? Will it spur France on to come out and say, right, LA, LA, on guard, on guard? As opposed to the expressions of Mon Dieu that we're seeing. The angle just too much for Grabenikov. There's the first point. Oh, set number four goes the way of Brazil. That's funny. Watching that, it did look, didn't it, as if uh, France didn't make a reaction or didn't come around because three blockers had gone up and Grabenikov hadn't cut enough of an angle as a result. Slightly out of position. A 
enough on that from Vinial. That's a good swing from him. And in fact, he's done very well since coming in, hasn't he? So much so, he's keeping his place on court. And Manichel is resigned to the bench. Tilly showing his reactions as he got out of the way of that. I think they're going to challenge block touch though. a long look at it aren't they which suggests it's not as obvious as we might think <laughs> yeah yeah they're not obvious at all it'll be Lucarelli with the serve shouts of double touch the ball's gone in but every team's been doing that every time anyone other than the set has put the ball into play and there's any amount of spin on it you'd think we were on the sand now for France. Vinier was trying to go so block out. And then Maurizio had nobody other than the net to get past. Wasn't able to do that, was he? Fascinating to watch how the players get themselves in a position to attack once that ball has been passed. That was really well watched though by Brazil. They knew what was coming. They just quite were unable to stop it, weren't they? That's why you saw that expression from Maurizio. Only are not helping himself or the team with that serve. an easy leave that sends LaRue back into the action as Legoff goes back to serve
France with their shortest and tallest player in the front row. Tonuti and LaRue. And Capeth gets the better of his club mate, Bruno. Such an important thing to do to close the net when you're blocking. Seal the top of that net. As soon as your hands get above it, they start, or should start to get across it. However, when you have to try and stop Lucas, as LaRue did, if he'd have gone straight across, he'd have been pressing his hands into Lucas's chest. I believe he's missed that. I find it hard to believe, I'm sure most of you at home do when you've got somebody who can jump that high, that they can miss the court. But then it's all to do with how close they are to the net, the angle that the balls come at them, where they are in relation to the ball. There's so many factors over and above the fact, yeah, you can jump high and you can hit hard, but you should be getting it in. Similarly, when you see it, a serve missed. Certain things don't change in volleyball, at least not for the moment. That is the size of the court, the height of the net. It's a constant. And yet serves do get missed. Float serves, jump serves. So, technical timeout. Number one of set number four. One point separating the teams, France with the lead. They had an 8-4 lead though, didn't they, in the last set? Look how that one turned out. Brilliant. Engerpeth brought in by that set. And as a result, he was able to slip past the block, wasn't he? Well, Lucarelli got out of the way of it. Probably wishes he hadn't now. Watched by Wallace. And again, Bruno just loves it, doesn't he? In transition, with Lucas buzzing around him. I mean, at one point, we haven't seen it yet, we haven't seen it for a while. Actually, I haven't seen first time I've seen Brazil this year, but see Lucas running on a, a one foot slide behind before now. The only. Oh dear. Well, I dare ignore that. Well, that's going to sting. Actually, there is some footage of Lucas from, from way back, and you may well have seen it online, where he goes to hit a ball through four, makes a real mess of it, and actually hits it down under the net. Even it can happen to the best of them. And it's another point for France. 11-8.
timeout called by Bernardinho. Wallace gets put down this time, one on one. We're heading into a decider, aren't we? We've got to go to a decider. For all the volleyball fans, all of those, except Brazil, obviously, because they want this one done, 3-1. Although France don't look like they're going to let that happen. Quite incredible to think as well when you look back to the game that Brazil played against the USA where they put out their second six and beat them 3-2. The USA with their strongest team. And yet, here we are now. Brazil's strongest team being given a run for their money here by France. Well, they're not the defending champions for nothing, that's for sure. It wasn't just a flash in the pan, a one-off. They're proving that by being here in this semi-final, having this lead in this fourth set and hitting shots like that. What a run of points from 10 for France. Tá, pretensão é o seguinte aqui. Os caras estão aqui. Hora de voltar aqui com calma. Por favor. Tá? Vamos rodar, Abedou. Vamos para a rede 3 nossa aqui. Rodar, vamos para a rede 3 nossa. Com convicção. Paramos aqui. Vamos todo mundo. Vai, vai. Todo mundo junto. Bora lá, galera. Bora lá. Vamos ver se vai dar. Bora. Bora, vamos embora, vamos Sometimes you don't need to say anything, just enjoy it. Enjoy this swing from Luke Corelli, all you four hitters out there. Yeah, with the block out. Jackson, it wasn't between leg off and Adair, but it's Wallace who gets the point. Rousier really unhappy, feels that one was thrown at him like a dart.
along with a little bit of 80s throw action now and again, especially if you get away with it. Technical timeout, France with a big, big lead. Can they hold on to it? Does it so well and so often Wallace doesn't need a big run up. He has hops and he finds the baseline. Done it again. Well, when you watch beach volleyball and you talk about the ability of players to tidy up, in other words, from side out the ball sends you halfway over the court, but then you put it back into a spot where your partner gonna have a hit. We're seeing that time and time again at this top level of volleyball where you're under pressure either from the serve or from a spike, and then the ball is put high and wide somewhere but still in a position where someone can have a swing. Many ways to get a point and put the ball on the floor, either in system looking lovely like that with the A-quick from Lucas, or with a, a ball that's flung out high and wide against three blockers, still gets on the floor. Nice swing from Lucas. So it's France that now call the timeout with Brazil's quick points two in a row from their side out. Nous nous reste neuf points à faire, c'est tout. Quoi qu'il arrive, quoi qu'il arrive. D'accord? Okay. Neuf points, les gars. Neuf points. Allez. Allez, gars. Non, donc ça, on a fait. On va dire tout le monde va Yeah, right back to the advertising hoardings. That's good up from Adair, isn't it? And Capeth wants it back, he gets it back, but that time Brazil knew what was coming. A smarter play would have been to go wide. Goff's getting out of the way, but no one able to cover. A serve from Adair! Was it a miss hit? Nobody cares especially those supporting Brazil. That's just horrible having to receive that. It did look like a bit of a miss hit, didn't it? No, it wasn't at all, was it? He's cut that right across his body on purpose. Brilliant serve. Well, where's he going to go this time? 
Grapenikov gets it in. Rousier. Oh, that one had backspin on it and was only saved from going out of the building by the crane camera. That one was well, a miss hit. And so as a result that, of that and that line of points fast call at the time à l'attaque quand t'as ton tu vas appeler ton ballon chacun vos deux bandes d'accord allez allez on est en difficulté on attaque on n'a pas peur du bloc on tape dedans on se fait ralentir on soutient allez d'accord ça allez 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 high five Was a nice throw, wasn't it? Especially in super slow mo. Or wherever in the world you're watching from, whether it be Sao Paulo or Southbourne. Hope you're enjoying the volleyball as much of us as all of us here in the Turon Arena. Oh, this is just brilliant, isn't it, from Brazil. There's going to be a change for France. Rossard's coming in in the opposite slot. Puyol is going to come in as the setter. They're going to make the double sub to put the Puyol into the back row and bring forward another hitter to try and get off this rotation. So from being at rotation four, they're now to back to rotation one. Now, does this mean in the scheme of things, Rossard's out of the play, and so therefore it's only really Liniel and Legoff with a chance of having a swing. Do Brazil take that chance and discount Rossard? Well, roars from the subs bench of France, thinking that should have been a double. That one's gone into the block, but also the net as well. Play will continue. Four touches has been called by the referee, which is his want to do it. That just means, actually, there'll be a challenge, and in which case there'll be a let if it's incorrect. And one thing that we have found with this new challenge system is that particular play is one that, um, in the past, you know, four touches, yeah, gone in the net, but they've said about 90%, maybe even 95% of the time, that ball has caught the block which would then lend itself to the fact that referees would just let it continue and then wait for the other team to challenge because you can challenge in play. Did it touch the block? They're having another good look at it, aren't they? Yeah, of course it did. It always does. So a let it is. A do over. Adair will serve again. Brazil now with the lead. Well, it was there for Legoff to hit. It was on a plate for him, even with a little bit of parsley next to it. But he didn't want it. And now France really under the cosh. Well, a 
waiting, didn't take a breath from me and from all of you watching, supporting France as this happens. Well, you have to feel for Puyol. He wanted to go behind, didn't he? And it just stuck in his hands. But the part that might have actually been perspiration on the ball as well from Drabenikov. More points for Brazil, more problems for France and the defending champions are now quite clearly staring exit from this tournament in the face. They still would have a chance to get on the podium having to play the third, fourth playoff. But look at this now, Brazil with a four point lead. And this is a truly amazing serving run from Eder. Puyol and Rossard have gone off. Tonyuti's back in with Rousier. They couldn't get off rotation four. They couldn't get off rotation run. They're now back into rotation four. Rousier. And he's managed to get the touch. They have the ball back. But they are very much on the back foot now. And that's just what they didn't need. Well, they're going to challenge, though. Ball in, ball out. They need it to be in. Oh, that looks in. It looks comfortably in. Will it be backed up by the official review? Yes, it will. It's an ace serve for Liniel, which is exactly what he wanted. It's never over till it's over, is it? Awesome. France gutsing it out. That's Lucarelli's ball, but then it swerved into Maurizio, didn't it? But as Maurizio is a front court swing hitter, you really want Lucarelli to play it. And it's an error from Wallace. Bruno trying to be cute and send that all the way across court. Instead of just letting Mauricio have a swing through four. No timeout coming though from Brazil. They haven't got any left, that's why. Nobody has. Andro's in, so they're starting the first part of their double substitution. Wallace will serve. No setter on court for Brazil. And it is a massive block by Maurizio. There are a few sullen faces in the French substitution zone. French sub zone. Wallace serves again. Brazil not out of it just yet. Not home and hose. France still in it. William comes in now for Wallace. Evandro, Lucas and it's Evandro, Lucas and uh, Maurizio available on the front row. Lucarelli on the pipe. He hasn't really been used a great deal on the backcourt pipe. I won't get used either with that pass. Maurizio tries to go block out. That doesn't work. And now we're level again. 22 all. Well, pressure does funny things, doesn't it? Just when you think you're in control and you've got it. 
one error can lead to another. And then the other team get their tails up. France have their tails up. Legoff with the serve. Nice ball in from Sergio. But it's not put away by Brazil. Neither by France. Another chance now. Evandro. Will it come back? Yes, it will. Horrible spin on it, though. Too horrible for Rousier to deal with. And then he didn't get a call from Tony Uti, who could have probably played it over. And Brazil take the point. Goodness me, what a rally. It's exciting. It's not pretty. Maurizio, deep breath from him as he sets himself ready for the serve. And it's a wild serve, much to the relief of the French fans and also the French commentator sat right next to me. Tony Uti now goes back to serve. Rousier into the front row as France move into three strong rotations. Good set. That was quality from William on his knees. Flicking that one up, or flinging it up more likely. And look at this. Lipe is coming in to serve. Match point up. His first time on court. And look at that from the players around him. Come on, son, we know you can do it. The French fans hoping he can't. The Brazilian fans hoping he can. It's a good serve. France are scrambling. But they get block out from Rousier. And they stay in it 24 all. Oh, he's smiling now. He wasn't, though, was he? Match point number two for Brazil. Engapeth can't believe he's just done that. Well, that's the one thing you get to see from the camera at the end of the course is how much this ball swings on the serve and why it's so difficult to pass at times. Bruno going to try perhaps and replicate that as he goes back to serve for Brazil. Sergio gets it. Maurizio with a big hoik is a free ball. If it comes back over, which it does, France have to go again. Rousier, he's done it, he gets it off the block, and another match point is saved. Really good effort from Brazil, and brought back only for France to hammer it away off the block. LaRue, massive serve from him. There's a challenge coming, and I think I know what it is. There's a challenge. It's a mid-rally challenge for foot fault on LaRue's serve. And it was called straight away. They're gonna challenge, they're gonna challenge LaRue for a foot fault. But the question is whether the challenge was too late. But it isn't. It was within time. And it was pretty much as the ball was being passed in, wasn't it? It has to be within the action to a degree if they called the right thing. Well, the second ref's going to be called over, I think. What are they looking at now? Well, there's a little bit of confusion, and I think Bernardini is going to say, look, there's the challenge. We called a challenge. So that's fine. OK, they're going to allow it. Wow. Dramatic scenes here. There's a the confusion reigns.
course, if it is an incorrect challenge or it wasn't allowed at the time, then that point would go to the other team, wouldn't it? So it would bring up a set point for uh, Brazil, uh, for France even. Match point for Brazil if this is successful. Where's LaRue in relation to the line? Oh, he's miles behind it. Incorrect challenge. And that means France have the point. France have their first set point. Oh, goodness me. He just needed to get it in, keep the pressure on Brazil, and he's let them off the hook. Their heads are above water. And now Lucarelli will try and score from his serve, but it is advantage Brazil uh, to France because they are siding out to give themselves set point. They have wrestled that initiative away from Brazil for the time being. Oh, excellent. Lagoff. Unopposed through the middle. Set point number two for France. It's Rousier with the ball. Wallace beats Engerpeth. Set point saved. So we've had two set points for France. We've had two match points for Brazil. And we're still no closer to deciding which way this is going to go. Et -er. He had that huge serving run, didn't he, the last time he was there. He'd like another one now. All of two points worth. Well, he's not going to get it, though, because he couldn't volley that ball back in off of the block. The block slowed it down. But he just went to dig first, and then he couldn't get his hands up quickly enough. Set point number three. Liniel too far into court, and the ball off the block goes long, but there's an error given against Brazil. I didn't see, I was busy watching Liniel running off. I wasn't looking at the court, I wasn't looking at my monitor. I don't know why it's gone against Brazil. Maybe it was a net touch or a centre-line violation. Either way, if that ball's still travelling and it's not outside the boundary of the court, then any infringement would still stand, wouldn't it? And Gepeth having a chat with Lucas. Club mates at Modena in Italy. Still finding the time in the middle of this to have a laugh. Wallace doesn't look best pleased. Oh, it's not, it's a net touch by France. Not by Wallace. He knew, didn't he? But there's going to be a yellow card against, is it uh, Lippe? Well, Bernardino, just a warning. So Brazil are level. It's against Lipe, number 12. It is getting tense. Wallace. France looking to side out again. Oh, brilliant. Drebenikov in the air playing that ball. The windmill, no good. This time by Engerpeth. And Maurizio puts it down. And Brazil have got themselves a third match point. Well, the fans are on their feet. Wallace goes back to serve. A picture of total focus. The defending champions on the verge of exit from this 
World League Finals, Rousier. Oh, he's found the line. He's found the line. The ball is in. And France side it out. No, it was miles in, wasn't it? Miles and miles. Or kilometres, if you're European. Flick off. Just the jump float serve. I say just the jump float serve. But it's still causing an issue. Well, that's a great dig from Legoff. Well, that's a double touch from Tony Uti. Puyol saying, no, never. Yeah, it was. And he knows it. French fans can't believe it. Well, we're all being put through the ringer here, aren't we? Watching this set. It's another match point for Brazil. 30-29. We're going to keep on going until somebody gets too clear. This is volleyball. It's like going back to old school when you could only score a point from your serve. And that's the way we've gone now. This game can only be won by a team winning a point from their serve. For Brazil, they need one. France will need two. Is an absolute scorcher from Engerpeth as he tattoos Sergio with that ball. Sergio pretending it didn't hurt. I bet this stings. The ball is down, and now it's getting a little bit tetchy on court as Brazil. Talking through the net, but they've got themselves another match point. France clinging on by their fingernails here. They've managed to side them all out so far. It's like we're into a penalty shootout, isn't it? Someone's got a miss. Oh, Lucas misses that one. France draw level, but they need two points from the serving line. The Brazilian fans can't watch anymore. Engerpeth goes back. He missed his last serve, didn't he? He was plumb into the net. What's he got this time? Well, he got it in. But Brazil are in the zone. They are side-out machines. And now Bruno goes back to serve, which puts Wallace into the front row with Adair and Lucarelli. It's a massive blocking lineup for Brazil. It's Rousier and Liniel and LaRue for France to get the side out. Rousier, good cover by Engerpeth. Tonyuti's back row. And it goes long, it's an error from LaRue, and France have done it, they've won the game. 33-31 by three sets to two, the defending champions are beaten, and Brazil are in the final. Epic volleyball. That was just incredible, wasn't it? French fans can't believe it. The French players can't believe it. Well, it had to end. But look at that. 28-26, 33-31. Brazil had to pull out all the stops and then some to get past the defending champions. France will have to make do with playing for the bronze medal. Brazil are through to the final where they will play Serbia. Oh, a test of character for Brazil. And they have passed with flying colours. All credit to France. They didn't go down easily. They played some sublime volleyball. But in the end, it was just too much for them. They couldn't keep it up. They couldn't live with Brazil and it just so happened 
that it ended on an error, but that aside, what a game of volleyball. Now looking at the stats, 11 errors each in set four. Brazil with an extra block. France with an extra ace. It was nip and tuck, nothing in it, was it? Opponents' errors. Well, each of them. Brazil getting a set and a bit's worth. France almost getting a set's worth. But the Brazilian block was uh, too strong in the end, wasn't it? Although France had more aces. Well, there's the best scorers. Make of the stats what you will as you look through them. That was an incredible energy sapping game of volleyball and both these teams need to come out again tomorrow and play Brazil though will be happy to do so knowing they're playing in the final here are the highlights Bruno, that was some game, wasn't it? Tell us about it. Yeah, it was a, an amazing game, I think, for, for all the audience. Uh, two great teams. The French team is, a, is one of the strongest teams in the world. They serve very, very strong. It's, it's difficult because we have always this pressure because they serve, serve, serve. It's, it's not easy for, for our side out, but I think we, we made a very good match tonight. Uh, Played with, uh, with, uh, with intelligence, with focus in all the moments, even when we were down from some points. And I think this is, is a, a, very, a very big victory for us, but tomorrow we want to, to, want to, to win again. You're talking about focusing, it was a really good serving run from Adair, wasn't it? That started to turn things around for you. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we are practicing a lot our serve, uh, trying to, to be aggressive in all the moments. I try to do this in all the match and uh, I think uh, uh, work it and uh, we are happy with, with this victory. Well, congratulations on the result and good luck in the final. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, what a fabulous match that was. Five, or well, nearly five sets, wasn't it? We had certainly enough points for that. We hope you've enjoyed the volleyball today. We've got two great matches to come tomorrow and we hope you can join us for that. But until then, from all of us here, goodbye. <laughs>